having uh, that we can set expectations properly. What's what's likely to not change? What is likely to change? These are things we're going to have to have to sort out. And then uh, Simca sent us all an email this morning, uh, raising this this point again that. The story is not going to be over uh, once we uh, leave the, uh, the large uh, obstructions in the jugulars and azagus veins. Uh, on, on my model of it being more of a stagnation issue, uh, that says to me there must be something that's hanging around uh, in, the, in the extracellular, around the neurons uh, that we need to know more about, nitric acid, uh, glucose, something else. Uh, and then, can we do things for the endothelium? So there's all these, uh, this, internet, this internet world is way ahead of the medical profession on looking at vitamin D, uh, low dose uh, naltrexone. Uh, there are medications out there that are used for varicose veins. Uh, there's probably gonna be a role for something where we try to uh, strengthen the endothelium clean out the swamp in addition to simply removing the, the big storm, uh, the big blockages in the main storm drains. Uh, and then, you know, there's something going on with the genetics so that, that, is, that we, we, we have to kind of sort out what's going on there. I, I, I didn't tell Mark this, but I ran my wife and daughter as normals. Neither one was normal. Uh, and they all had exactly the same finding. My son was much more severe. There was the same size, same location. Uh, so uh, that's going to be. They also, they both of them have severe fatigue. So they don't have MS. They don't have uh, uh, gadolinium enhancing lesions or neurological symptoms. But they did not have normal studies. Uh, so getting more normals is, is critical. It's tough because it's hard to, for me, it's hard to convince a normal to give them gadolinium. You know, that's a, that's a lot to ask of, of a friend. Uh, Mark, when you come in September, you can be a normal subject. I'm definitely a normal subject. But it's an interesting point. Remember, the Dotnell study, they did 500 cases, and I think it was 250 normals and 250 MS cases. And that was Doppler, wasn't it? And Two. Yeah, but it wasn't the Hakey protocol, right? Not completely. But uh, basically what they, they claimed was they found 22% of the normals appeared to have the symbolic criteria. Well, it turns out that they used age match relatives of the MS people. So in fact, you know, I, I don't say this negatively, but they were criticized because they did that. And from what you're saying, if this is genetic, or even if it's a 20%. It might explain why Zamboni found 0% because he didn't use relatives from those people when he did his normal. But so bad enough, they used those relatives. So maybe it's not a surprise that they found 20% might have similar things, basically just the way you did with the wife and the daughter. Well, it gets worse. My wife wants to have the procedure. So I said, I am not going to tell my IR who I dragged into this mess. I sort of snuck it on that. You know, now he turns out he's a friend of Dake's, so he was not totally ambushed by me. But I was trying to ambush him, right? I was trying to get him to do my son, and then I got him on the IRB, sort of before the politics really went crazy. Uh, and now he's totally happy he's doing it. Uh, you know, he's happy. He's, all these IRs, all IRs are loving this, right? Their last cool disease was, uh, was hysterectomy, was, was uh, uterine fibroids, you know, and, which was uh, Dr. Spohani's last... Uh, last winning war. Uh, okay, uh, so what, what do I tell her? So I, I had her go to see a cardiologist, uh, and they're sort of working through, uh, he had never heard of this. He says, you don't do, uh, you don't do IR on veins. So here's a cardiologist who didn't know you could even do it on veins. So he's having to work through that. But, but they're saying, I have severe fatigue. Isn't it possible that I'm going to end up with a MS lesion someday? Uh, so I think fatigue is going to be the final battlefield here. Uh, you know, it's not going to end with MS. What if it turns out fatigue is not a psychiatric symptom? Right? Uh, and then so, uh, the viral autoimmune theory at this point, that's the hoax, right? Forty years of research has come up with nothing. Billions of dollars of research, so they got nerve calling this the hoax. Uh, the drugs are, you know, there's the false hope. These drugs don't work very well. well. So this really is the most exciting thing happening in MS right now. And the neurologists are on the sidelines for reasons that I still don't really understand.
everyone should be uh, getting involved with this. Everyone should be studying this. And there's no way around studying it but to have people have the procedure to find out what happens, find out which veins, find out who gets better, what doesn't. Uh, everyone should be risking false hope, risking letting people uh, go in there and, uh, uh, and, and not be helped. Uh, the second patient we evaluated, the, the husband, uh, I said, well, you know, I understand neurologists don't want to give people false hope. The guy punched me in the, in the chest with his finger. He says, who do you neurologists think you are to be not saying this, that false hope is a bad thing? You know, how about any hope, right? What's weird about neurology is we specialize entirely in untreatable diseases. We're the ones that have the hope, right? So we, we, we just got to get out of that attitude and start, start helping these people. Thank you.